the next step for Jackson Dart as a quarterback is going to put him in Manning S categories at Ole Miss. So everybody buckle up. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Also did a little time at WSMV. Thank you very much for joining us. Today on the show, we talk about Jackson Dart and his year three development and what that is going to look like. We talk current wideouts, his recruiting prowess, and his play on the field. We look at the wide receiver room that's attached to Jackson Dart that George McDonald has has and why it's absolutely massive springs for Caden Lee and Aiden Williams. And USM chose this year to talk all the noise at Mississippi State and Ole Miss only to get slapped down. The Grove Collective are doing their March to Victory campaign this month. What does that mean? Well, it's their new NIL campaign for Ole Miss Athletics, and their hope is to raise $10 million and have 10,000 total memberships by the end of March. It's a March Madness type contest competition that pits regions of the U.S. competing against each other, and they're in the Elite Eight right now. Let's keep Ole Miss Athletics at the forefront and go to thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make that happen. Go to thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make that happen. This is the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, so we do one of these episodes, it seems like every three months or so, about the next step for Jackson Dart and what does a year three Jackson Dart look like and all of that. And we have a little bit of context to put on this. So we're going to take one of these year three Jackson Dart topics and mix what is what he did in spring break, what he is doing in practice right now, how he is recovering from his offseason surgery. We're going to talk about that as well. But we have a lot of stuff to get to. And the first thing is let's just talk about on the field Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart in 2022 was really good. He had one game that was essentially really, really noteworthy against Vanderbilt. And he threw for 27 for 56, near under 50% in that middle tic-tac-toe board zone, three touchdowns, five interceptions. And we railed on him all year. Like in year two, Jackson Dart, you have to fix this. You have to have numbers better across the board. And, you know, the question then was, was he going to be able to do it? In 2023, that really changed over. He was like 70% in that middle tic-tac-toe board zone. He was eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, His deep center was probably his weakest zone. But if you look at NFL passer ratings on there, it's like 93 outside left, deep left, 105 deep right, um, 67 deep center, 125 middle left, 137 middle, middle, um, 127 middle right. Is just big number after big number after big number, which lets you kind of know that Jackson Dart is kind of doing the stuff on the field that you want him to progress at, progress at doing. And he turned into be a really, really good college quarterback. Now, I'm not going to come on here and tell everybody that he is a surefire number one pick super quarterback in the NFL draft. I That I don't know about, and honestly, I don't particularly care about that. I care about the fact that Jackson Dart is the perfect quarterback for Ole Miss's offense. We all said that whenever Matt Corral was quarterback in Ole Miss, that this is the perfect quarterback for a Lane Kiffin offense. And in year two, there was big strides made by Matt Corral, and he became 
a really good player. If he wouldn't have gotten injured, he was going to win 10, 11 ball games. Ole Miss went out and got Jackson Dart from USC. He got in, rushed into spring training. Whenever the spring game happened, he did not have a good spring game. Everybody freaked out. He had the quarterback competition with Luke Altmeyer. Jackson Dart ended up winning that job and getting better and better and better throughout the year. That goes into a 2023 season to where he's competing with Spencer Sanders, a four-year starting quarterback, and Gatorade, or not Gatorade, Big 12 freshman of the year type quarterback that he had. Jackson Dart beat him out, and not only beat him out, beat him out easily. I don't think that needs to be overstated. Beat him out easily. So on the field, he is progressing. And what does the next step look like for Jackson Dart? Well, honestly, other than the deep middle, there's not a lot he can do. What Jackson Dart is competing in the next step is his magnetic personality. Lane Kiffin talked about him having a magnetic personality that people just want to follow. His work during the recruiting cycle in the transfer portal. We always talk about the portal king. A lot of these players were recruited by Jackson Dart. So if Ole Miss gets to where they need to get and where they're going to get it, let's say Ole Miss wins a national championship in 2024. This is kind of Jackson Dart's national championship. He's the one that put all this together. And the players came in wanting to follow him, whether it's Walter Nolan or Juice Wells or somebody like Deion Smith or that defensive line class that Ole Miss recruited out of high school with Kamarian Franklin and William Eccles. And those guys, Jeffrey Rush, Jackson Dart was integral in recruiting those players. So that is a huge part of his legacy. Now, I want you to sit back and think about the on the field, he is a really, really good football player. He is a potential Heisman candidate. You see all these way too early Heisman lists. He's on it. You see what he did against the number one defense in the country. and. He just he shredded them. It, it was honestly not fair. And when you look at the wide receiver room that all of a sudden Jackson Dart has at his disposal for 2024, that includes Trey Harris, who might be the best wide receiver in the country. That includes Juice Wells, who coming into the 2023 season was competing with Trey Harris for being one of the better receivers in the Southeastern Conference. When you have Jordan Watkins, who is Mr. Reliable, and you're going to see video in this second segment of him working. Um, George McDonald took video of it and all of that. Really interesting stuff. And then you have younger players like Deion Smith, Aiden Williams, um, Nareel White, Caden Lee, who is going to be an unbelievably massive spring, spring practice for Caden Lee and Aiden Williams. We're going to talk about that in the next segment because I think that – is the story of spring. People are going to tell you how little to value spring practice and how little it means. And yes, it means little whenever you're looking for big pictures type stuff. Spring practice is about developing your players, retaining your players with a transfer portal that's about a month out, and trying to set forth an impression on your coaches that when fall practice starts, you are in the best possible situation. That's what spring practice is for. And Jackson Dart, I, I would not worry about any players on Ole Miss's roster transferring out. Now, Ole Miss is going to have to do a lot of stuff to keep them and keep players happy, I'm sure. But that magnetic personality that got them to Ole Miss and Jackson Dart, it's still going to be there throughout the summer. And throughout the this transfer portal window from April 15th to April 30th. And Lane Kiffin's going to continue to bring people in. I'm not worried about players transferring out at an alarming rate at the transfer portal window of April 15th to 30th. Some people are going to get everybody all riled up about anybody that could possibly leave because those anxiety things is a good way to get clicks. It's a good way to sell subscriptions if you're constantly worried about something like that going on. But the transfer portal in January and the players that came in 
and everybody talking about Jackson Dart's magnetic personality. I, I don't think that you have to worry about it this cycle. Now, come December, that could be a different story altogether, but we'll jump off of that bridge whenever we get there. So if all of that happens, Jackson Dart is able to take a recruiting class until through this signing period into next season, he performs on the field on a Heisman finalist type level, and you have the receivers and the players around him that you have. I think it's a con very conceivable thing that Jackson Dart is going to enter Manning-esque territory at Ole Miss. He is going to own every single record with the exception of maybe touchdown passes. That might be the record that Eli gets to keep. Jackson Dart's going to own the rest of them. And with his magnetic personality, with the way you draw people in, with all of the stuff that is going on around Jackson Dart, he is one of the big-time NIL winners currently, as far as real NIL winners right now in college football. All of that stuff is going to contribute to a legacy of Jackson Dart that could be about to explode. Could be absolutely almost Ole Miss fans unhinged, the Beatles, the whole nine yards, all of the hype that is going to go into this 2024 playoff run, he is going to be the face of it. And if you think about that, if you think about what that means, that's going to supersede a Cotton Bowl. That's going to supersede a Sugar Bowl. If Jackson Dart gets Ole Miss into the playoffs, and let's say Ole Miss hosts a first-round playoff game, he is the greatest quarterback that has ever played at the University of Mississippi. Last name or not, there's not really anything that you can say about that. It's all at his fingertips. He hasn't done it yet, but it's within sight. It's within spitting distance. If he produces on the field, he keeps the players around and makes sure that somebody doesn't go off and try and do something else, like Caden Proctor went to Iowa and is going back to Alabama. Whenever that happens, you can understand exactly where this team could be. And it's all because of the efforts of one number two. Jackson Dart has done things for Ole Miss sports that all fans should be appreciative of. And if he performs on the field like he could and Ole Miss host a playoff game, I don't think anything other than the Archie Who craze in 1969, 1970 will even be close in the fam in the fan base. Thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. Why is this spring practice so important for Aiden Williams and Caden Lee? And we talk about this wide receiver room overall and what they could be. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Oregon Ducks are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the final Pac-12 tournament, punching their ticket to the big dance. They say, win life, go rogue. That's exactly what the Ducks have done here. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, and Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel is here and lets you bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're into betting on one big upset, a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spread, money line, heck, even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Are you watching Fox Sports and... ESPN on your TV all day, have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, 
Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on that free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every single day. All right, so this is going to be a big time for Ole Miss, Ole Miss's wide receiver in your room, and specifically Caden Lee and Aiden Williams. We did a show a couple of weeks back about Caden Lee, and we talked about what he could be in the slot and what he's matching up with. Now, a couple of the videos that we saw yesterday, we had this one video from George McDonald talking about wide receiver players, and the first pass on it was just Caden Lee just cooking a defender for a touchdown. And that gets you excited. And that knows exactly what he can do. Now, it's one of those plays that you kind of see at the end of the play, if that makes sense. But it was obviously kind of a slot fade. And that prototypical slot type wide receiver for Caden Lee is going to do help him out quite a bit moving forward. I'm pretty, pretty fired up about what he could be. Now, he's going to compete with Jordan Watkins. And Jordan Watkins is Mr. Reliable. We're going to talk about him and the wide receiver room in a, as a whole in a second. But right now, this spring practice is going to be unbelievably important for Caden Lee. With Juice Wells currently out of practice, now he's probably going to go back into practice shortly. And Deion Smith not being at spring, there's an opening for some younger wide receivers to make an impression going into the fall. Now, the important thing, and I've talked about this all the time, this staff does not do OJT. It just doesn't. They want people they can produce. They want people they can count on. They know, want to know a play is going to be right. It's going to be like a video game. It's going to be like robots. That is what this staff wants. Caden Lee earned his job with Jordan Watkins being in, injured in the Peach Bowl and essentially became uncoverable for the number one defense in the country. So Caden Lee made a beginning of the year to the end of the year jump to the point where we should probably pay attention to him in the slot position. Now, George McDonald, historically, the slot wide receivers has been his moneymakers. If you look at what he did at Illinois, they had a slot receiver that went over 1,000 yards and was all Big Ten. The slot receiver will be an interesting key for Ole Miss in 2024. Whether it's Juice Wells going to the inside, whether it's Jordan Watkins staying there because he turned into a really good, reliable slot receiver, and you have Caden Lee who's going to do a great job as well. I'm pretty fired up about Caden Lee. Caden Lee has a chance to make the impression that he needs to make to the coaching staff with all of those receivers coming in towards the end of spring with their, them going through their learning curve and some of them not coming into August. Another receiver that needs to probably make an impression this spring is Aiden Williams. We talk about Aiden Williams a good bit of the time. He is a good wide receiver. He has all the talent. If you look at last year's wide receiver class that everybody's talking about, you know, going into this season, everybody's talking about real wide and Braylon Burnside and um, J.J. Harrell and those guys, none of them, are at the level of Aiden Williams. None of them. I, I said this before everybody picked their location, and you can go back and find that location if you that of that show if you want, want proof of me doing that. Aiden Williams would be better than every receiver in this class. He's a special guy. I talked to two or three people at the Under Armour um, next All-American game last January that talked about, man, the Under Armour people loved him. And – Cormani McLean, who was the top cornerback in the country, had a nice one-on-one -on -one rep during the Under Armour All-America game, and it was a terrible pass from the quarterback from being a walk-in by Aiden Williams. He has all of the juice, all of the ability. This spring will be imperative for, to him with Deion Smith not here, Juice Wells getting caught up to speed. This is a chance for Aiden Williams to make his presence be known. Now, my suspicion, this is just my suspicion, 
is that Aiden Williams will be the backup this year for Trey Harris. Because I think the plan is for Aiden Williams to step in and be the number one wide receiver next year. And then you will have Deion Smith, Jordan Watkins, and Juice Wells competing for a secondary wide receiver and slot receiver. I don't know if that's going to necessarily affect Aiden Williams, but Aiden has a chance to get on the field to make an impression on the new wide receiver court coach, George McDonald, and he has a chance to be really good. Now, we showed some other stuff that's going on in practice. One thing you notice is that Pete Golding is doing linebacker instruction with Suntarian Perkins and with TJ Dudley, which tells me, okay, they're kind of playing that Jack type role to where you're learning some pass rush stuff and you're learning some stuff going, going down there, but you're also playing back there. So you expect versatile type players that are coached on a lot of different positions. All of these videos, all these snippets, we can get a little bit of information, but that's what we're looking at. You got Jackson Dart that looks honestly fine. They probably aren't sending him through contact right now, but throwing the football, he looks fine. He's fully dressed out, and he does not have a no-contact jersey on. So he looks like he's okay and good to go. Um, Austin Simmons, you see, saw video on there of him at football practice. I, I have it on good authority that Austin Simmons is going to miss next to no football time this year. Even with him pitching for the baseball team, football takes priority. And football was, if you listen to an interview that he did a couple weeks back, that was how he made his decision. So that quarterback competition is going to be important for him and Walker Howard as well. You see um, him coming live as well. So football practice is going to go on. Thursday night, tonight, David Eckert is going to be on to talk about his interviews and any viewing that they might get to do if they open that up for any particular reason of it. We're going to overanalyze all of this because that's what people want. And um, we're going to talk about every little thing that we notice so you don't have to pay attention to every little thing to try and notice every little thing. If you watch this show, you will get it. Spring football loves football. Honestly, I loved spring football when I was the video coordinator at Ole Miss. And they were sitting there over and over. Everybody was like a slog. I loved it. Whatever it is, the temperature in the air, it getting warmer every single day. Um, it, it was just a cool feeling. And this spring practice is important for like Kedrick Reesono, um, Aiden Williams, Caden Lee, players like that. It's very important for somebody like Camarian Franklin. This is where you earn you kind of make your bones to get in the rotation of what will be a pretty stacked defensive unit in the fall. These are the stories of spring practice. This is what we're paying attention to. We're not paying attention to big picture type stuff. We're not paying attention to honestly, whether or not a player is going to leave. I don't, I don't care. I, I root for the Jersey. There's enough turnover in college sports anyway to where even at the max, if you had a good player, you were going to keep them for three years. It's hard for me to get really riled up about players leaving. It, it just is. Now, some players might make you a little bit worse, and that is a reason to get riled up. But it's, it's just not that case um, this year. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So USM talks all of this noise at both Ole Miss and Mississippi State and proceeds to get slapped down by both of them. Fire TV is your destination for sports, for from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers an amazing viewing experience with smart TVs, as well as they have Fire TV sticks, that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for basketball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports bands, brands, all for free. 
That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a lot more. Not to mention all the great news, entertainment, gaming, and travel videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Alexa and Fire TV devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today available on the free Fire TV channels app be part of history. Now, this is really kind of a funny thing. USM, this season, they thought this was their year. They did. And they got rambunctious with it, essentially. They started to chirp. And I've defended USM. And I think Ole Miss should play USM in football, all of that. I'm defending all it. But it is unbelievably funny for you to spend all the time chirping and acting like a big brother for a chance, taking that opportunity and you got slapped down and you got basically embarrassed by Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Ole Miss was an 8-3 to winner over Southern Mississippi. Wasn't a very descript football game or baseball game, I should say. But what it was, was Ole Miss just kind of taking care of bad pitching on their way to a win and Mississippi State and Ole Miss taking down Southern Miss in the process. Now, the last game in the College Cup will be between Mississippi State and Ole Miss on May something, early early May in the Governor's Cup. That'll be for the championship. And we'll see exactly how that goes. Now, like I said, it was kind of hilarious that Mississippi State and Ole Miss just kind of slapped down Little Brother. And everybody can have a laugh at Southern Miss's expense for games played in Pearl. But that doesn't mean that Ole Miss and Mississippi State has arrived. It doesn't mean that Southern Mississippi has dropped down. I just think it was funny that that happened this year whenever they were chirping at Ole Miss and State. When both of those programs have won national championships this decade and you haven't even been to Omaha, you just you decide you want to chirp. You decide you want to be funny. You decide that you want to be something a little bit extra. Well, enjoy the little bit extra that you became because – Little brother gets the little brother a little bit longer. Like I said, I like Southern Mississippi. They're a fun G5 team, a fun Sun Belt team. I like rooting for them in the Sun Belt. Um, but let's not forget our place. And unfortunately, USM, you know where your place is. And I think we proved that in the Super Regional in 2022. I think we proved that when Ole Miss won a national championship that very same year. And we'll see how exactly it goes. But Ole Miss and State looks like they're getting right a little bit. We'll see. College baseball in the SEC looks like it's going to be a bear again. I'm not looking forward to how that is going to wind up. Um, for everybody because it's just going to be a meat grinder to where you have to go through every week face a really tough opponent thanks for making locked on Ole Miss your first listen every day of dayers we have Demarcus Lodge this week to talk about spring football but for your second listen locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day 
with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Howdy toddy, everyone.